good evening it's I've snuck out to do a wild camp uh, it's the 4th of April 2020 amid the coronavirus spreading everywhere at the moment so I found myself a cave I'm gonna pitch up in that I'll isolate myself completely and I'll spend a night here so I'll bring you back when I've set myself up Good evening ladies and gents, boys and girls. I've um, I've come out on a wild camp. Now it's the 4th of April 2020. So I have to be really careful. Again, this virus and self-isolation and stuff like that. So I've set myself up in a cave. So nobody knows I'm here. So cheers. I've been sussed. I'll take this hat off. Cleaning my tent. As you can see, I was taking Mickey then. Um, I'm not camping out at all. Uh, it's the uh, it's right in the midst of this coronavirus. This is just silly if you went out camping anywhere. But there's a special thing that's happening tonight. It's called the Bra the Great British Camp Out by NHS staff. Basically, there's a uh, a lad. I think his name's Alan. Has set up this um, this Facebook page, and you can basically virtually camp out as though you actually camp out anywhere in the world really but you're actually at home you're not actually anywhere you're just at home so the page is basically to set up it's set up to raise some money for uh, nhs charities actually so far they've raised about fifty-seven thousand pound and this is saturday night so no doubt when i wake up tomorrow morning i'll look on the uh, the facebook page and have a look at um how much they've actually raised but i think it's a fantastic idea i mean you know it We've been isolated now for two weeks. It's been shut down since uh, week of Monday. So um, what else is there to do besides me painting all the house and fixing everything? And I thought when this thing came up, I thought what a fantastic idea to go out virtually camping or camping really, but virtually in the wilderness. So uh, let's take you around the little site we've set up. Now I'm camping in the tent. Sharon's got the camper van at the side there. She's camping in that. And we've got um, a little fire going as well. So let's go through and have a look at uh, what we've got set up. Fire's blazing away there. Right, um, a few drinks here. Easy, Coca-Cola, just to uh, water things down a bit. Bailey's, that's mine. Uh, Sharon's is uh, this uh, Sipsmith London Gin. Oop. Um, Gordon's Gin, which is Sharon's again, because I don't drink it. This is my stuff. East Coast IPA. Uh, and have a look, oh, this one here. And uh, Twisted Knots American IPA as well. I've got some more in the house, but I've just brought a few out. And uh, some Pringles. Cheers, everyone. You've seen the van before. Um, it's not quite set up yet, but um, someone's put a little light in there. She's put the covers in the window. And um, all we need to do is just pull that um, sofa out, has that um, rock and roll bed out, and she can keep in that later on. I know.
Just cooking bait in it really. Well, turkey bait in that the case. Very nice. The ice tastes better when you're outside. Right, ladies and gents, it's nearly 12 o'clock. I'm just uh, throwing the rock and roll bed out for Sharon. And then she get all the stuff sorted. She's got a kip in here tonight, and I'm got a kip in the garage. This is Riga, our friend from Lithuania, I think it is. We picked him up from there, and since then he's stayed in the camper van. He's travelled everywhere with us. All right, mate. Good old toilet. Uh, Round wig in here. It's called the Petty. <laughs> It's your the sheep. It's your the sheep. Is that your company tonight? Oh, you, is Riga sleeping with you? Two timing thing. Okay, bed's down. Just need to get the um, stuff in there, then Sharon can go to bed. Well, the bed's set up for Sharon. Um, the heating's on, so it'd be nice and warm for her anyway. So, this is where she's keeping tonight. Well, it's one in the morning, and normally, if I'm wild camping, I'm not in bed by between half eight and nine o'clock anyway. In winter months, that is. Um, I've just um, seen Sharon off to bed in the camper, and I'm going to gain that tent in a minute and uh, go to sleep. But uh, the um, the cause for the um, what we're, we're, we're raising money for the NHS. It's for the charities that belong to the NHS, all linked to themselves, the NHS itself. And uh, minimum donation is two quid. And I think uh, just giving charge you a quid on the pay, so two of us, five, uh, it's nothing really, is it? There's about 60,000 quid, as far as I know. Uh, this is Saturday night, Sunday morning now. Um, but, you know, We've all used the NHS at some point or other. Um, sometimes we don't realise that um, how important our NHS is, but I do realise how important it is. And uh, I'll tell you the reasons, mainly reasons why. Um, if you'd watched my video on the Deerstones camp a couple of months ago, me and Bernard went up camping. And at the beginning, I said, I've not had a chance to get out from the beginning of December up until three quarters way through January where we are now. Uh, family health issues actually. And um, that's all you needed to know but what I've decided to do was, and the family, have, um, we've put it on Facebook as well, is now this COVID-19 has kicked in big style and it's um, it's affecting the world as a pandemic. pandemic. And um, it's affecting a lot of people, especially with underlying health issues. And uh, in my case, um, one of the reasons why I hadn't done anything for the past couple of months previous was because um, my son Lee was... Um, I'll start from the beginning. My son Lee was injured in a car crash um, in 1998. And uh, he was a passenger in a car... Uh, in a van and it ended up on uh, one lane on the M6 near Stoke and uh, he um, ended up in a car crash a lorry at them from behind carrying an MRI scanner of all things and um, he hit him over 66 mile an hour he'd fixed his vehicle so he could go faster he'd worked 20 odd days in a row because apparently in them days you didn't need a tachograph uh, if you were carrying medical equipment I hit him that hard that um, my son was thrown through the window with a broken neck and he's paralysed from his chest down with neither use of his hands or his wrists. Now, for me, he was the lucky one, but he doesn't think he was. My brother-in-law, David, um, my son's best mate and David's best mate, uh, another David, died in the accident. As long uh, And the lorry driver who hit them died as well. So... My son, because of this um, injury he's got, has always suffered from um, underlying issues. Anyway, on the 1st of December 2019, he was, um, my daughter found him early unconscious, really, and couldn't breathe very well. 
and they were taken to Wigan Hospital. And um, they found out we had he had pneumonia. So they had to put him on a vent straight away. And um, he was that bad. The pneumonia was that bad, what he had. Uh, it seemed to affect his heart as well. And his heart kept stopping. And uh, they ended up putting him a pacemaker in to try and keep his heart from dropping below a certain amount of beats per minute. That seems to work. And um, over two and a half months he were in hospital. He was constantly on the vent for nearly all that time because of this pneumonia issue. Now in 2019, um, when he went in, they didn't really know what sort of pneumonia strain he had. Uh, I know he had um, two lots of, if I remember rightly, two lots of flu viruses. They tried to get rid of it in Wigan and they couldn't do it. They couldn't get him off the vent in Wigan. And they ended up taking him up to Southport, which is a, a spinal unit um, specialist part of that hospital. And he's an outpatient of that for the past 20 odd years anyway. And eventually they brought him off the vent. And um, at this present time, Lee is absolutely fine. He's, he's no health issues as such. He's pretty healthy now, considering the condition, condition he's in. Um, but <clears throat> um, I personally think, I may be wrong, I personally think he's had this COVID-19 because I've never seen Lee as bad in my life, ever. And he's had no money before 10 plus years ago, but not as bad as this one. So hopefully, and fingers crossed, he has actually had COVID-19 because at least he's got some immune system to it. Fingers crossed anyway. Uh, normally, as I said before, we don't normally, we keep everything quite private in the family, especially to do with Lee. Because we don't want sympathy, we don't want pity or anything like that. But I think the time is right to tell Lee's story and what happened to him. Now... He has underlying issues, and we know at the moment, for a fact, in 4th of April, the 5th of April now probably, uh, 2020, that a lot of people are dying. Not necessarily underlying issues. <clears throat> uh, some apparently have been fairly healthy and have died because of this virus, so it can affect anybody. So the message is, is once something like this happens to you, and if you recover, absolutely fine, that's great. But what you don't want to do is spread this horrible, horrible virus to your neighbour, to your friend, to your family. Because you just don't know if you are going to recover or you're not. We don't know. Abilene, for me, was really, really lucky. And if he's had COVID-19, then hopefully he's got some immune system to it. But if he hasn't, and he catches it, it will kill him. I know for a fact it will kill him. Because this is such a deadly strain of virus, It's you just don't know how on earth it's going to, what's going to happen. I mean, today I've heard a little girl, of, or a little, I should say, a child of five has died, uh, and other people have died with not underlying issues. So my message to you is uh, keep safe, Keep at home. Don't go out unless you really have to. If you don't want to go jogging, just don't go jogging. Um, if you have to go out and you want to do something as such as jogging or walking around where you live, not where you're going to drive to, but where you live, then do that by all means. Uh, but otherwise, if you can, please stay in and take care of yourselves. Uh, because, you know, the last thing that you want to do is something happen to you or something happen to your family. Because if somebody dies in your family, you cannot go to their funeral. You've got to, you can't even, if they've, if they've got COVID-19, you can't even visit them in the hospital. You can't go there either. So, you know, you've got to take as many precautions as you possibly can. I know you're very tall before, but at least you're hearing from somebody who has experienced uh, pneumonia in, in the family. 
And luckily enough, considering that how bad he is, the NHS have done a fantastic job. I can't thank him enough. I can't thank him enough. I was just so glad I live in this country and not America. Because if you have no insurance in that country, for me, what are you going to do? In here, the NHS is for everybody. So this charity thing we've done last night, uh, and I said before, it's only two quid minimum per person. It's nothing, is it really? So, fingers crossed, let's keep supporting our health service and the drivers who trek all the food to the... Um, to the uh, supermarkets and all the people if you think about it all the people that are actually serving you they're on the front line as much as the, the nurses because they don't know who's got that disease or that virus nobody knows you don't know it's invisible it's invisible and the government are all they're asking you to do is just stay at home it's not as though we're at war as such as guns and bombs and that it's a different type of war and we need to fight it as best we can so hopefully, you know, take the government advice, listen to what they say, do what they tell you. It's not going to be that long. I mean, you know, I'm camping out here. You know, I'm making the most of it. I'm even joking about stuff like this. And I know, it, you know, it's affected my family. Pneumonia. So, you know, just keep safe. Keep well. Think about all your family and friends. You'll see them sooner or later and keep safe and I bid you good night and I'll see you in the morning Well, good morning, camper vanners, caravanners, wow, glampers. Whatever you stayed in last night is fantastic. As long as you stayed at home and isolated yourself, that's brilliant. <coughs> um, I've just looked at the post now. It's quarter to eight on a Sunday morning. I've looked at the post uh, on the Great British campaign for NHS staff and so far they're over £71,000 now that was from last night I'm not seeing anybody post anything this morning from the actual uh, people that set this up so hopefully it might be even more no doubt I'll uh, point on the bottom of this whenever we get the final um, summing but uh, hopefully you all had a good night's sleep um, I had a good night's sleep like I, I do quite a bit of camping anyway so just camping on concrete is a little bit different than camping on grass. <laughs> Made myself a brew, <clears throat> spilt half at um, hot water from the kettle. Sharon's still in the camper van anyway, she's still fast asleep. So um, I bid you farewell, have a fantastic day, keep your spirits up, keep yourself safe, you, your family. And also a massive thank you for the NHS staff all over the world and all for the key workers as well. Uh, that's including truck drivers, people who serve you in the shops, because they're putting themselves at risk as well. And uh, fingers crossed, everything goes all right. We can get over this uh, pandemic as soon as we can and get back to our normal way of lives. Fingers crossed, we should do anyway. Right, it's been uh, nice to talk to you and uh, see you again. <laughs>